Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to your Lake Fork Guide. Hey, today we're going to do a walkthrough of my Skeeter FXR20. We're also going to go through the storage layout and how I set everything up in the boat, fishing in it most days with multiple people in the boat. This was actually requested by one of you guys. One of you guys actually during a live stream asked me to do a layout, storage layout video. So I figured we'd do that, give you a little walkthrough of all the features that I use on my boat. Because at the end of the day, I'd much rather make videos about what you guys want to see. I'm here, I'm here for y'all. I'm here for the people, folks. That being said, let's quit wasting time. Let's get into the boat, see what's so going on. We'll start up here at the nose of the boat. The first thing you're gonna see is the little Rance Ghost trolling motor. Guys, this thing has lived up to the hype and then some. Uh, I've been using it for a about nine months now almost right at nine months and look at here no wiggle it actually shakes the boat it doesn't shake the bracket at all whatsoever uh, this trolling motor is more powerful than my ultra x the spot lock is more accurate everything about it is more quiet from even when you put it in and out of the rack it has the self-correcting head uh, it has the landing assist so it doesn't clank down into the water when you throw it down if it slips out of your hands or whatever uh, I can't say enough about this trolling motor. Like I said, it has by far exceeded my expectations. So, I can't speak on Garmin, uh, but I can speak on the Lowrance and the Ultrax trolling motors. I would much, much rather have this trolling motor than an Ultrax for me personally. It does everything just a little bit better in my opinion. Next, of course, I'm a Lowrance electronics guy. I know hummingbirds are becoming more and more popular. I have a 9-inch Lowrance HDS Live on the front of my boat. I also have a 12-inch Lowrance HDS Live right here on the console of my boat. Uh, these are the electronics that I use. I trust the ease of function, how easy I can mark waypoints, how familiar I am with the setting uh, operations, and how to adjust these graphs and dial them in. I'm just much more comfortable with Lowrance, so these are the graphs that I've been using. Also got twin power poles back there, as you guys can see. Power poles are the brand that, to me, again, quietness is a big deal to me. Hey, if you guys watched that certain that study that we did with Jake Norman where he was talking about the noise factor, noise factor is big. Power poles are much quieter than talons. Uh, when they break, they're much easier to deal with power poles. They're a great customer service company. They're unbelievable. Anytime anything breaks on a power pole, they pretty much just send you a new part or whatever you need. No questions asked. Uh, absolutely love my power poles. And I use the blades. Power pole blades are the ones I'm using. One little extra that I added to my boat is you can see that little black circle over there. That's a Fusion speaker linked to a Fusion Bluetooth. I also have another speaker right there. That's just something that was a little perk that I wanted included on the boat because, you know, I like to jam a little bit. I like to bump it a little bit going down the lake. If you've been on a guide trip with me, you know when we make any kind of a lengthy run at all, and sometimes all throughout the day the music is constantly going, I do like to listen to a little bit of music, especially when I'm running down the lake wide open. It's pretty awesome. Of course, the color on this boat, this particular boat, is a little bit unique as well. That main color you're seeing, that silver hologram, uh, the cover in the the color in the middle the black color with the silver sparkle i don't remember the name of that color but it's black with silver sparkle and then of course i have the gunmetal gunmetal pinstripes going up and down the boat as well but this was a custom ordered color i really like kind of the simple clean look of this color when i designed it on the skeeter website and to my knowledge this is the only skeeter fxr that looks like this there's no other one this color everything about this boat was custom order you know skeeters come with hummingbird electronics and an ultra trolling motor i changed that out Skeeters come with different uh, color options that you can get. This is actually a custom ordered. Uh, I added the speakers in there with the Bluetooth system. And I had everything, of course, networked. The troll I can actually control my trolling motor from right here. That's one really neat feature is I can sit right here with both my customers on the front deck. We can be offshore and I can mark a waypoint and I can tell the trolling motor to take us to that waypoint. Uh, that is an insane feature as a guide that you can utilize. And, and even just as a fisherman, I mean, you can kind of put that thing on autopilot and you just have to fish. And the trolling motor does all the work for you and you can spend more time making casts and all that. You don't have to fight the wind. You can literally plug in where you want to go on your trolling motor, hit go, and just keep fishing the whole way there. So pretty, pretty cool feature. Pretty cool feature. Of course, some other interesting features maybe that you guys might be interested in. Of course, we've got a full electronic panel here controlling everything from live wells to bilge pumps to lighting to just, I mean, everything within the boat. And then another neat uh, feature is right here, these switches you see right here and here, this is your uh, live well plug and your drain plug for the boat. So you don't have to fidget with your drain plug for the boat. You just go boom and boom. And now my live well is plugged and my boat is plugged as well. I don't want to take it out at the end of the day right here. Don't have to climb under the boat anymore. And this other deal you see here, this is actually the controls for my Bluetooth. So I don't have to actually have my phone out. Once my phone is playing music through this Bluetooth, I can control volume and songs and power from right here. Charging port, my cord's plugged in right here. 
Uh, you can see where your battery power is at right here throughout the day. You can check on it whenever you're out fishing. Uh, then we have an oxygen button right here that provides, there's a, a built-in oxygen system on these FXRs for your live well. So you can just turn that on and it's putting oxygen into the water. Uh, dry dock. That's actually a fan system that blows throughout all your compartments. So if you get some water in your compartments, you can simply turn that on. Leave it on overnight and your compartments will get air flowing through them to assist in drying them out. And Skeeter's now building their own trailers. I have to say, since Skeeter took over the construction of their own trailers, the, the trailers are much more well built. They tow better, they're more durable. Uh, Skeeter's making a top end trailer to go with their already top end boats. By the way, my recommended dealer for all this stuff is Nautical Mile Marine. Uh, I trust their service department above all. It's by far the best service department I've ever worked with. They make sure that I don't miss any trips on the water. Uh, they do a great job. Treat everybody with a sense of urgency to get your boat in and out of there as efficiently as possible. And on the buying side, maybe you can go there and the guy's Mr. Chris. He sure does know how to work some financing for you if you need it. He knows how to find boats for you. They're really close to the manufacturer. So if you need to custom order one like I did, you can go see the folks at Nautical Mall. They'll take good care of you if you need to buy a boat. I'm probably missing some stuff on the features. I'm kind of doing this off the cuff here, but that's kind of the basic features of the boat. Now I'm going to get in here and show you guys how I lay out all my storage within it to get through my days. So we'll start from the back of the boat and move forward through storage. This compartment right here is going to be all life jackets. It's a bunch of life jackets and throw cushions and all that stuff. I have to keep extras for customers, of course, so that thing is slap full of life jackets. These two doors right here are just big live wells. It's got a big divided live well. This box right here is a little bit of a catch-all. I've got an extra hoodie in here. Don't know why that's in there. Probably took it off in one of these fall days. Uh, rope, rain gear, camera equipment, somebody's bag. They left me some more trash from customers down there in the bottom. Uh, there's some tools jumper cables graph covers i mean there's a little bit of everything this is literally my catch-all box of course we got an ice chest right here in the middle this little glove box right here this is going to be more of a miscellaneous catch-all i've got some of my new frogs that are still in the package in here uh, i've got extra Gro gopro clips in there this is where my keys go uh, bug spray ibuprofen just any little small stuff you want to keep you know semi in one spot in a little area like this this glove box is perfect for that here's the meat and potatoes of the storage layout video i'm sure this is what most of you guys are going to want to know how do i lay my tackle out for a day of success uh first thing i'm going to put excess rods in this box right here on my left as you guys can see i've just got a few in there hey we've had a lot of rods out i've been operating with about 18 rods out at any given time when i fit, have to provide rods for myself as well as two others uh and during the fall there's so many different baits that can work. Things can change so fast day to day weather wise. So this time of year, I've just got an extreme amount of rods out. Normally there would be a lot more rods in here. I can store about 15 rods in there really comfortably. Uh, I have put as many as 15 in there and had no problem with organization or anything. The way this rod locker is designed, it's got that big hole up at the front. Lots of room to strap rods down here at the back. It really will hold a lot of rods in that box. There is rod storage options in this side as well if you needed more. Man, I've got to keep a lot of tackle. You know, like I said, providing gear for myself as well as two others on just about every day, I've got to have a lot of storage. All right, so I'm going to take the camera down here and show you guys exactly how I use all this storage space to make everything kind of work in what I hope to be the most efficient way possible. So first is going to be this big main box right here in the middle of the boat. Now, I try to keep as much stuff, I try to keep everything that I'm going to need right here in this center box that way i don't have to move any rods you know like i said a lot of times i got a lot of rods out with customers and these side compartments are gonna be closed with rods on top of them well to fully get in there and dig stuff out i've got to move those rods so i really try to concentrate and keep everything that i might need for the day in this center box as you can see it holds a pretty ridiculous amount of tackle you know these bait bags from six cents have really helped a lot as you can see here i've got one with all my weedless big swim baits are in here it's labeled as such weedless big baits hard big baits line through big baits so i've got so i've got all my big swim baits right here i've got a line through bag i've got a hard bait bag for glide baits and jointed baits and i've got a big weedless bag as well then also these little bait bags so this right here these two bags right here are smaller divine swim baits i have one is shad and one is bluegill in each of these bags right here and then the rest of these are just you know there might be plastics in here. I really like keeping my plastics in these things. I have different boxes. I've got top one. Like that's a jerk bait box right there. You guys can see all my jerk baits. I've got a swim bait rigging box right here. As you guys can kind of see there, we'll open this up so you can see it better. But I've got every type of swim bait hook, jig head, 
Alabama rig, everything to rig a swim bait on is all located in this one box. Top water baits, you guys can see all my top waters right there. I've got shallow crankbaits. I've got a box. <coughs> I've got a box for each style crankbait. So I got these are my shallow square bills. These are my movement ADXs. These are some lipless crankbaits. These are my divine shaky head worms in all different colors. Clout stick baits. Hollow body swim baits. That's a box slap full of prawns right there. You can see I got tons of prawns. Those boxes are simply a way for me to keep everything organized and easily accessible. Hey, if I'm fishing prawns and I want to change colors, I have all my colors in at least a full day supply right there in that box. Um, that way, if I'm throwing black and blue and the sun pops out and I want to throw green pumpkin magic, I can just reach in there and I can see all my colors. I don't have to go digging through bags, searching through a box full of bags or a bag full of bags to look for the right color. I really like being able to open up and see all my colors and all my size types and all that in one box. It helps me get in and out of the storage compartment as fast as possible. The idea is to spend a lot of time in here in your garage. That way you spend as little time as possible in this compartment right here or any of these compartments when you're on the water. I also use these bags right here for a weight storage. These are shaky heads. I got a bag full of shaky heads and I have another bag just like that full of different tungsten. and all different sizes of tungsten still in the package so I can see what it is. Then I've got this little handy deal right here that I keep right in this little compartment fits in there perfectly. Hey, these are all my backup hooks. I have a bag slap full of every type of hook you can imagine in there. Just like I have a bag full of tungsten. You say, well, Billy, hey, you don't want to sort through your worm bags. Why are you sorting through all your hook bags and your weight, your weight uh, containers? I'm not. Let me show you how I tie these in together. Like I said, these are backups. Those weights are also backups. So one thing that I do, once again, I keep one of everything that I might need for a day in this compartment right here. This is the day tray. That's what this is known as. The old day tray. Secret goodies in here. So I've got one of every type of hook that I might possibly need. Every size, one package of each. All my hooks stay in this middle compartment right here. I've got all my uh, accessories, you might say, in here. I've got dye. I've got dye pens. I've got Sharpies. I've got beads, I've got swivels, um, everything here. I'll also keep some of my weights in here, as you can see down on the bottom. I keep a package of weights back here. I keep some of my loose weights, my extras that come off the line in here, and I reuse this first as much as possible. So I really try to keep everything that I'll need as far as hooks and weights go, uh, rigging stuff, right here in my day tray where it's easily accessible. Now, as soon as I run out of one of these items, I'm going to take those backup bags and replace it. So let's say I'm using five odd EWG hooks. Well, if I run out of five odd EWG hooks, or let's just grab one, let's see what that is. Four odd EWG hook right there, stout wide gap hook from six cents. If I run out of that, I'm gonna reach in that hook bag, pull a new package out, put it in here, throw that package away. That way I'm always keeping the hooks separated in their individual packages, helps prevent rust, helps keep everything apart from each other. If you get one rusty hook, you're not gonna lose an entire box full of hooks. Uh, when you start boxing hooks, you get a little bit of rust in there, you can cost yourself a lot of money in a hurry. That's why I choose to do it like that mainly. One thing that I also do to prevent rust, you'll notice there's a hook sitting right here. So if I cut a hook off a line and I'm changing that bait that it was a hook bait or whatever, I'm putting something else on a crankbait or whatever, I'll take that hook and before I put it back in the package, I'll lay it right there where it can sit beside there and have a chance to dry out before it goes back in the package. That way I don't get rust in that package. Always let things dry out before I put them back in a package. Texas, man, rust is a real issue. You put anything wet back in a confined area, it's going to start rusting. It's going to spread to all the other metal that are in that package with it, in that box with it. Uh, it can be a real issue. And finally, in this compartment over here on this side, this is all stuff that I shouldn't need on a day. This is all backup stuff, replacement stuff, um, things like that. I've got a medical kit and, of course, a fire ex extinguisher that I keep right here. Uh, this bag right here is line. This is spools of line if I need. I have big, school, big spools that I keep in my garage, but I keep little spools in the boat in case I need to replace line on a reel on any given day. I've got extra plastics in these bags here. All extra plastics. These are all extra plastics. Impact shads, swim baits, six cents baits. Also, all of these boxes over here, this is kind of my extra stuff. Not extra stuff, but stuff that I'm not using as frequent, frequently this time of year. I might need a bubble fry this time of year, but usually I use a bubble fry more in the summer and early fall. We've kind of transitioned out of that time. I just put this box up in here not too long ago. Uh, keep as many boxes as I can in the main compartment, but these are boxes of stuff that I'm not using as often for that time of year, 
and so I rarely need them so I put them over here to the side if it does come a situation where I need something out here I do have to move the rods to get in there to get them uh, but that's pretty rare so there you go guys that's my storage layout man I don't know how much that'll help you I know one of you guys requested it I always want to do the videos that you guys requested We've recently had a request for another mapping video uh, I'm gonna get into that as soon as possible for you guys look for that coming up in the next couple weeks hey thank you guys so much for watching um, as you can see, basically my storage strategy boils down to everything that I need needs to be in my center compartment or my day tray where I can get to it at a moment's notice and get in and out of there as quick as possible. Uh, keep single storage, single day amounts of product ready to go and keep backups in other areas. And once again, I have to thank my sponsor, SixCentsFishing.com. Hey, go check them out. They're linked in the description. If you order anything from there, be sure you punch in the code, your Lake Fort guy. Highly recommend those bait bags. They help me with my storage, my organization. There's no doubt those bait bags make me more efficient day in, day out. And that allows me to spend more time fishing. allows me to catch more fish. It really does. Actually owning the bait bags puts more fish in my boat. I know that sounds crazy. It sounds like a pro step plug, but it's actually true because the organization help keeps me with my bait in the water a higher percentage of the day, which does provide more opportunities for bites. Which at the end of the day is what it's all about. Hey, I'm sitting here in this boat. I'm sitting right next to my 22 kill sticker. Right there on my dash. It's the only sticker I've got on my boat. Hey, it's getting up on the holidays time of year. I know a lot of us like to give to charities around the holidays. Got to shout out 22 Kill, man. Great organization. They really do a lot in the military and first responder community to help combat mental health issues that so many of those guys struggle with. Uh, these are guys that go out and sacrifice a lot, a lot to provide us with safety and security and the freedoms that we all enjoy every day, like the freedom to go fishing whenever we want to. Uh, we owe a lot to these veterans and first responders. Uh, and 22 Kill is about as good of an organization as any I've ever come across in making sure they're taking care of the needs that those guys have. They use the money they get in a very efficient and responsible way. Highly recommend if you're looking for a charity this holiday season, check out 22 Kill. Donate to them when you can. A uh, great bunch of guys over there. Hey, I guess that's going to do it, man. This was kind of a hodgepodge. Put it together off the cuff. None of this was planned or scripted out. Hope I didn't stumble through it too bad. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fork Guide.